It's Aloha Tuesday, Big Grace on Saturday. Breakfast with love. And Pancho Man! Thank you, Pancho Man. We are brought to you by EAS Myoplex, Hoka One One, Polar Velo Fix, Norma Tech Four Seasons, Hualalai. We'll be hosting our world, our world Championship Edition on Sunday morning. MEO Power Breather, our next guest, Sarah Crowley, who took 15th last year. How you doing? I'm really good, Bob. I've had a good preparation, so I'm looking forward to Saturday. Wow, you've had an amazing year, right? Look at everything you've done. I, I love the Ironman Frankfurt race. That was, that, was a, that was a really cool one between you and Lucy Charles. Yeah, it was uh, something I, I didn't appreciate at the time, the size of the event, because um, I hadn't raced a lot in, in Europe. So yeah. uh, it was pretty amazing to see the crowds and the support for Ironman racing in, in Europe. And take me back. Growing up, what were, what were your sports? Um, I was a bit into everything, actually. I, I really enjoyed swimming at a young age in Australia. We've got sort of a real swim culture. And um, so I obviously sort of started out with a bit of that. And I, I really loved running through high school. And bike was new to me. Um, I played a bit of basketball, a bit of softball. Pretty active in Australia. Yeah. yeah but you didn't know triathlon? Oh, no, not until I was a bit older. So about t 23, I started, I saw a, a pretty cool uh, surf race uh, in my hometown of Adelaide and uh, pretty much signed up the next day to, <laughs> to a tri club and, and um, yeah, started getting involved with all the gadgets. <laughs> all the great toys, <laughs> oh, right? Yes. You love the toys. Those first few years of triathlon are just unreal with you're, all the different things you find. You're buying everything, yeah. right. <laughs> now, at that point, did you uh, accounting degree and starting to work at Deloitte? Yeah, look, um, yeah, I started out trying to train and and um, and and I was actually doing my CA, which is uh, the professional qualification. Yeah. So I was working at Deloitte. Um, I just recently got engaged, and yeah, it was pretty busy in around sort of oh oh five oh six. Yes. And did start out with ITU style racing? Yeah, I, I just missed the boat a little bit with the under 23 age category. So I went and threw myself straight in the deep end with um, the, the uh, senior, senior racing. And oh. I built my way up to racing World Series uh, in about 2009. Okay. And when did you get to the point where you felt like, you know what, I think I want to move on to something? You, you were trying for London, I'm assuming. Yeah, look, I, I, we were building into that, but um, my swim just wasn't where it needed to be. And, and I needed to either change something or, or just go, you know, I, I decided to go back to work. And um, I still raced while I was working. Um, right. but and more, raced professionally. Yeah, I raced professionally, but obviously, you know, in a, I was in a full-time capacity in my right. job. So. The fact that you were able to race professionally as a full-time uh, at Deloitte, that's pretty impressive. Yeah, yeah, Deloitte supported me really amazingly. So they gave me a leave of absence to race ITU. Um, yes. And they supported me through my professional development at, uh, and, you know, training and racing at the same time. And then also, again, once I went back and... and um, race profession semi-professionally i guess and and they're once again supporting me now while i'm off off work so they're incredible oh, so you're still i'm technically still employed oh, i just really? i don't go into the office <laughs> well i do this but is talk. your office here yeah this is my office i'm it's, just it's not bad yeah i'm director of good times now. i'm director of good times <laughs> that's pretty sweet so uh, the, when you made the move to 70.3 and beyond, did you do a number of 70.3s before jumping into longer or just stick with that? Yeah, I had a pretty successful year in about 2012. I won uh, Cannes 70.3. Mm. Uh, and then I had a few other podium results that year. And, and then I got a leg injury and, uh, and there was some pretty big, I worked in corporate finance and there were some right. big transactions we were doing and I got kind of more involved in work. And then after that, I kind of built back into it again. And towards the end of 15, I started having some more 70.3 results and I'd done uh, one Ironman around that time just to sort of see what it's like. A lot of my friends in my Red Dog Tri Club uh, would, would kind of convincing yes. me to have a go and race them and things. So I, I did uh, have a race at the longer course stuff then, but it, it, I did, it just felt like something was kind of missing with... Uh, the performances I wasn't where I could be uh -huh. uh, and so I just sort of I thought around the end of 15 I needed to try something new and uh, I was ready and I was at the right age to to go professional full-time again and were you coaching yourself at that time uh, oh, I was involved in a club Red Dog and they were like a really large club and they have a lot of um, 
they have a lot of training sessions available for people that are working full time. Uh-huh. So I just sort of made it work, but I didn't have a background in long course racing. So I wasn't really aware of the differences and, and things involved in the training, um, comparing from the shorter stuff mm-hmm. into the longer stuff. So it was a little bit of a mixed bag of me trying to work it out. And yeah. So what, what got you to point where this year, I mean, you look at all the different stuff besides, uh, um, besides Frankfurt, you Aussie Long Course Championships, Asia Pacific Ironman, uh, Ironman Cans. You had a phenomenal year. Yeah, it's been pretty unreal. It's sort of bu- it's been building for a while. I, I did take uh, time off uh, at the start of sixteen to yes. invest in in getting better, and um, I, t- I spent a lot of last year training and finding races to train camps to train out to improve mm-hmm. and um the big change is obviously uh changing coaches and going full-time so now i'm with cameron watt and trisado and it's they've just got such a wealth of understanding of long course racing yes. in the background so um that's been a real stepping stone for me in the past 18 months and when i look at last year uh you know you 58 swim 513 bike 324 run 942 15th and that was your first time racing here? Yeah, that was my first time in, in Kona. I uh, I haven't, um, I hadn't even been here before. So <laughs> for me, I, was, I didn't have a, a great deal of pressure. It was more None. just to suck it and see and try and find out what it's all about. And yes. um, I learned lo- quite a lot that I can use this year in my racing to, to kind of, you know, um, sort of understand it a bit more. Right. So what, what did you take away from this island and from the, that race? I think the key takeaway is, I think, A, obviously the pacing in Ironman is important and even more so in an event where, you know, you can get such variation in conditions, right. winds, heat, um, yeah, there's all sorts of things. But also that this is a world title and uh, the best, best girls are here. They're here to play and you need to um, race your own race. It's so easy it, to get carried away. It's easy to get carried away. And that was – I was – I was a silent observer almost last year. That's what it felt like. And now I can take that knowledge and, and really apply it this year. So you felt like you were sort of observing while you were racing. Yeah, it, it, yeah. I did. I, I felt like uh, it was a really good learning experience. Love that. Uh, and what are your goals this year? Well, we've been uh, working to kind of step up levels in my training and uh-huh. ability this year. And we've seen it, some signs in these other races where we've performed really good. And it's it's been great uh, having the opportunity to kind of, you know, uh, just get another chance at, at right. racing here again. And to it would be fantastic to be able to sort of execute on some of the training we've been doing and, and you know, see where I'm, I'm at. Because I think we took the time uh, just after uh, Penticton World Title to, yes. to go back and... and um, you know, just try and step that, up another level. That the interesting thing with Penticton, that's such an interesting distance, right? It's yes. it's, it's like a <laughs> six hour ish or seven hour ish type of, of, it's, of race. It's it's different. It's hard to pace because you don't do that many races at distance. No, I really had the opportunity to show my run a little bit in that yeah. race because it, being a little bit uh, shorter, you can really uh, carry on the the run right. speed for a bit longer. And um, yeah, it was a really really good event. Do you like the the seventy point three or the full? Which is which is better for you? Oh, I think if you actually ask me, I, I quite enjoy non drafting Olympic distance because you can really yes. rip it. I do like going fast, but yes, I think um, you know, I guess then yeah, I, I quite like everything. I enjoy long runs and long riding, and, yeah, and and I enjoy that opportunity to escape a little bit with right. the training, and you can just sort of meditate almost whilst training, but. Um, yeah, so I kind of enjoy all, all different distances. And not much of a problem with the transition in terms of nutrition. That always seems to be the big uh, issue for people. <laughs> yeah, well, when I very first started, there was a big problem with that. <laughs> was there? But yeah, it's taken quite a long time. I think once you kind of get to the the point where you decide on uh, what does work for you, it's best to stick with it. Yeah, and what... what what mistakes did you make? Oh, uh, just not enough, basically. I remember my first half Ironman, I think I had one gel. <laughs> For the whole day? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you're it, going, was a, it was a disaster. Why did I get disaster. fatigued? In the <laughs> I run. ran so fast off the bike and then and then I didn't for the next <laughs> 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 I ran off so fast off the bike and then I didn't. Yeah. <laughs> that is so cool. Well, Sarah, so nice to get a chance to meet you. Thank you so much for taking no time and coming pleasure. over. <laughs> Sarah Crowley has been our guest. How about a round of applause for Sarah Crowley and Pancho Man. Take us out on day two. Thanks, everybody, for being here. It's a little hot Tuesday, but we'll be back.
back tomorrow morning. Breakfast with Bob. <laughs>